Hello my fellow Swedish death metalers, today we look at the heavy pedal from Adiorti. If you're watching this, you probably already know what it is. It's the Boss HM2, this time in plug-in format. The HM2 was originally produced in 1983, was not a big seller, um, but it has become quite the collector's item. Some of them going for over $500 now, especially for the coveted original Made in Japan run from 83 to 88. It's known primarily to people like me as the sound of Swedish death metal. It is an aggressive, fuzzy, nasty distortion with biting mids and a lot of low end. And it's a cool sound. It's not the most versatile or useful pedal for every application, but when you want a chainsaw, you need a chainsaw. This does that. How good is this uh, plugin? Well, it's quite good. You heard it on the demo. Let's check it out. We've got the familiar controls here for all the Audiority plugins, noise gate, input and output gain, and a dry wet mix. And it has a number of different mods here, different modes to give it some different characters. And we're going to play through some of those and see what they sound like. If you know this pedal, you know the settings, they are supposed to be maxed out. but for those curious, I will run through once and just show you what all the knobs sound like. And um, this pedal is actually a little more usable in different ranges than the original, so it is a bit more versatile than an actual HM2, which is nice. It also runs in stereo, so we're going to hear both the rhythm guitar tracks running through just this one copy. Here is my amp. I am running this with a little bit of gain and I'll show you what that sounds like. But pretty straightforward. I've got the the treble a little bit backed off, the presence a little bit backed off, the mids a little bit up, as you can see from the knobs. This is a free amp sim, and it works well with this. For my cabs, I'm using the new uh, Slipknot speaker, the DV77. I picked up these IRs, and I love them. So this is my own uh, custom cab setup here that I think works well with this. Here's a little bit of the clean tone without the pedal. Just a little bit of gain. I find that this pedal really works well with just a little bit of breakup. If you push the amp too far, it gets out of hand really quick, but a little light overdrive really helps uh, bring out the chainsaw because obviously it needs more gain. So here is the default mod uh, with the levels all the way up and I'll just go through the knobs here.
so I can give you a little sense of the range of this pedal. Um, we can try out a few of the presets as well. Let's take a look at those real quick. Well, there you have it there's all the presets now the fun part let's take a look at these mods we've got the manual open here and the original pedal is the red line that is the measurement on the hardware unit and the simulated circuit is the blue line on these EQ graphs so here's the default that we've been listening to the first mod we can look at is the 808 mod, which is a brighter version, less distortion, and um, a brighter EQ. So, I'm just going to go full chainsaw settings on these, because, you know, that's what we want, right? Next up is my favorite I found, the Made in Japan version, which is trying to match the original hardware as close as they can, and they um, used an impulse response of the hardware and uh, better component values. So it's not 100% the same as the original, but you can see the EQ curve here is it's pretty close, and it definitely has that uh, honky chainsaw sound. So let's check that out. Next up is the Swede. This one locks the EQ to its highest values while applying an impulse response of the knobs all the way maxed out. In some of the other demos I've seen, this one might be the closest to the hardware, but it doesn't have quite as much of the aggressive upper mids. It's got a more accurate high end. Um, either one works. It's a little less aggressive than the Made in Japan mod, but both of them are really good and quite close to the original. These last mods uh, I haven't played around with much. They're a deviation from the original pedal, but they might yield some interesting results, especially with some different settings besides the uh, chainsaw setting. So first up is the Wampler, which is uh, comes from Brian Wampler's book on how to modify guitar pedals. It's brighter than the original circuit pedal and has some different diodes in there. Again, doesn't really sound like the HM2 the same way, but uh, who knows? I'll have to play around with it more. Still cool, but quite different. 
The last is the Z, in which the circuit features a different EQ configuration to get a warmer and scoop scooper tone, <laughs> more scooped tone to the default circuit. And there's some different diodes in there as well. This one is very mid-range focus and sounds, it reminds me kind of of some of the clones out there that aren't going for an exact HM2 EQ sound. It's a very mid-focused version and might be useful for something. We'll see. Before we move on to the base, I'm just going to do a back-to-back -back comparison of all the mods. I'm going to switch them pretty quick, but that way you can get a sense of how they differ from each other. Now I'm going to play through the bass part and I'm going to switch through the mods and we can check that out. Um, I've got the mix at 70% on that, so there's some of the dry signal coming through and here's what that sounds like. I definitely dig it on bass too. It's pretty thick and crazy, but um, it sounds great if that's what you're looking for. The Wampler mod is kind of interesting on bass too. That's a little more cleaned up and um, I think there's more things you could do to get creative with sculpting a bass tone with this, but it sounds good. Uh, it sounds good in chainsaw mode. It's cool on bass. It's cool anywhere you want. Is it cool on drums? Probably not, but we'll save that for another day. It's a great pedal. Uh, I wish I had the original hardware to compare it to, but I will be doing a comparison with my Behringer, which I painted to look like an HM2. Uh, this is the HM300. That is another clone, one of many. It's the only hardware clone that I own, but um, 
you can check out the video on how I painted that and some sounds I got from that before. There's also another VST plugin that I have that I can compare it to. So I will do a comparison video with those later. I hope you go out and enjoy making some sweet chainsaw riffs and um, drinking lingonberry juice all the while. Cheers.